We traveled over 3,000 miles. We were going to change the world. We did. There was a spirit of, of excitement. We brought the issue into national consciousness. 1970 was the year the women came. They were excited, hopeful, and furious. They called it the abortion caravan. And they traveled from town to town, preaching about what they perceived as an injustice. The abortion caravan of 1970 was the turning point for the pro-abortion movement. It was the time when women forced a sensitive, clouded, and often hidden subject into the limelight and catapulted abortion into the minds of everyday Canadians and forced them to take a position on the issue being so skillfully pushed by activists. And so it started, April 27, 1970, in Vancouver. According to the Toronto Star, in 1970, the abortion caravan planned a daring plot to push the issue from shameful silence into national consciousness. The women left Vancouver in vans with pro-abortion slogans, stopping in communities between Vancouver and Ottawa. Across the country, the women raised awareness about abortion. They reenacted purported back alley abortions, handed out pamphlets, gave speeches, hosted rallies, and generated media attention. Upon arrival in Ottawa, the women of the abortion caravan burned Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau in effigy, dumped a black coffin full of coat hangers at 24 Sussex Drive, and chained themselves to chairs and railings inside the Parliament buildings, shutting down Parliament for the first time in history. Their message was crystal clear as the media splashed it across dozens of headlines. The media coverage alerted the Canadian people to the fact that change was coming. What did these women accomplish? Joyce Arthur, abortion rights advocate, stated definitively that the abortion caravan helped politicize and activate women around the country. According to Angie Gallup, the women in the caravan didn't see abortion completely struck from the criminal code until 18 years later in 1988. But they laid the foundation for the well-organized, pro-choice movement that activists like Judy Rebick joined in the early 80s. 18 years, as Rabble.ca reported, though abortion would not be removed from the criminal code until 1988, the abortion caravan was the catalyst, bringing the issue to the forefront of Canadian consciousness. It was not a short road to abortion on demand, but it all began with the abortion caravan. What was meant to be a campaign for women's rights has turned into the greatest human rights violation Canada has ever seen. to reverse the bloody legacy of the first abortion caravan. The abortion caravan of 1970 has changed. This spring, the new abortion caravan will begin to right the wrongs it once proclaimed 42 years ago. Now, 42 years later, the new abortion caravan is coming to expose what choice really means. And now, Another group of women, men, and children are coming forward. And what matters is when each one of them was born. All born after 1970. All born after the killing started. All survivors.
This new abortion caravan will also use vivid imagery. This time, instead of people focusing on a woman's choice, a new movement of people will use abortion imagery to force the Canadian public to consider what is being chosen. Young people, survivors of a generation that has only known legal abortion, they will rise up and retrace the steps of the 1970 caravan. The preborn are Canada's invisible children. It is time to make them and their living hell visible. In every city and town we stop, there will be postcards in mailboxes, posters on poles, activists holding signs, and large trucks driving around neighborhoods all across Canada. Citizens will hear of abortion on local morning radio shows. Uh, and a, a, a group called the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform has... We'll see abortion on the TV and in your daily newspapers. Good evening. Some people living in the Northwest are angry with a piece of mail they got this week. Thousands of large postcards with graphic images of aborted fetuses were distributed on Wednesday by a local anti-abortion group. The battle over abortion could drive right down the street of your own neighborhood. Graphic images shock those who've seen them. There will also be presentations and debates in every town and city we stop in. The reality of abortion will be everywhere. And what it does to the pre-born children of Canada will be made clear, plain, and visible. As long as children are being killed, we will expose that reality. Injustice that is invisible inevitably becomes tolerable. But injustice that is made visible inevitably becomes intolerable. We will end the killing, and we will end it in our lifetime. Will you join us?